Happy Saturday, everyone. Are you having a good Saturday? Welcome to the round table of dim lighting. Oh, that's a special effects, Link. Oh. Could you bring that back up a little bit? Just a little bit? You know what that means? That means another episode of Ear Biscuits Audio Only. This, except for our Saturday video on Rent Link 2, which is sort of like a video, um, video introduction of that week's audio only podcast. You thought about that? It is that rep. It's, it's a little m- meta. It's, it's more than that because there's things that we can also just converse about. But quickly to make we, this video worth your while. We will we will tell you that this week on Ear Biscuits, our special guest or our guest, she was very special, but she was also just our guest, was Glozell Green. We talked to her about what it was like to grow up as the only black girl in an all white school, how her first viral video was made basically Completely on by accident. accident. Yeah. Oh, Completely by accident? Yeah. And uh, also why she is banned for life. Banned for life from The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. She's not banned from watching it at home. But she cannot go they, into the studio. They don't know that if, if she's doing that. But she cannot show up there. She doesn't have one of those Nielsen's boxes? No, Niels, Nielsen's <laughs> boxes. Nielsen boxes. Th- those do still exist, by the way. But that's not what we're going to talk I've got about. One. For the next few minutes. I mean, when she started talking about um, her being banned from Leno, it made me think, ultimately, of our appearance on Conan. But, I mean, the medium step was, have I ever been to a late night show as a a spectator? I really haven't been to any shows as a spectator. Like, when my mom comes into town, Christy takes her to see the doctors, or that's what happened to your mom. Jesse yep. and Christy took your mom to see the doctors because we have a connection Had a there. great time. But, we, but we've never been to a live taping of something unless we're going to be on it. Now, what does that say about us? Oh, we're not going to... Prima donnas. We're not going to be in your audience. We have to be on the stage. We have, yeah. to, we have to be the guests. Self-absorbed. That is one thing that it means. Maybe just busy. Maybe another thing is just busy. I would definitely have, have gone... Uh, and I would like to have gone to see Conan, even if I wasn't on it. I think it might would have made me feel more prepared for being on Conan. Now, uh, I'll just go ahead and say we were on Conan as guests. I mean, it's been two years ago. My next guest traveled to small towns across America and offered to produce commercials for local businesses. All right, we have a lot to talk about. Link and Rhett. That's right. And uh, you guys, uh, you've been making, started making these commercials just sort of for fun. Real commercials for local businesses. Uh, now, some of these commercials have 100 million. Is that right? Total? Is that total aggregate? 100 million YouTube hits on the it internet? It sounds better when you say one has that. But okay. it's actually aggregate. Yeah, but 100 million views on YouTube is quite astounding. Okay, how did this come about? How did you start doing it? Well, we've known each other since first grade, so we've been best friends. They held us in from recess on the first day of school for writing nasty words on our desks. Right, I understand. (laughs) Nothing extreme is like fart in hell or something like that, but... We've heard a lot worse tonight, Uh, so... As a part of the promotion for Commercial Kings, our uh, show on IFC, reality show about us making local commercials, part of the PR package of that show, which I think is an interesting thing, is that when you have a television show on a network like IFC, one of the things that happens is they're like, okay, the show is gonna premiere or the show is happening, and so you've got to do this PR tour. So we went to New York, and we're guests on some different things, and they were like, oh, and we got you on Conan. This is not the kind of thing that happens when you're an internet comedian. You know, this isn't the kind of thing. People aren't like, hey, tonight we've got Rhett and Link, a host of Ear Biscuits. You know, it, it, but if you're like, oh, they got a show on IFC, all of a sudden it's like, oh, yeah, you can get a conversation on a late night show. So that, Well, it's that interesting. The... You can be on, I mean, you can be on Ellen for making a viral video. That's true. She she recognizes, Ellen recognizes every yeah, once in a while. But, but she more, also uses our videos on a regular basis without crediting us. But, but we when still you're love a, Ellen. When you're a guest on Ellen, it's like you made, like Glozell's first video, a, a uh, accidental viral video type of thing. Or just like a one-off video. It's not like you're a YouTuber as a professional. Right. But I will say that uh, Freddie and Brandon, Freddie W., they were guests on Kimmel based on their YouTube channel. Is that right? I think that's the only exception that I know of. But because when you have a television show, you have this this engine of people whose job it is to promote you and get you out there. And and we were excited. I would say it's one of the highlights of of my career is being on Easily. Conan. So I'm I'm not denigrating this thing at all. No, I I would love to be invited back, but I'm just saying that the state of entertainment right now is such that yeah, it's weird. It doesn't matter 
what your online popularity is like, you're probably not going to get an invite to a late night show unless you have a PR person who is trying to, is making the case for you. So the thing that, um, happen when we're on Conan, you, you start to realize the process of how this thing works. You, you, don't, uh, you don't get an email from Conan or a phone call from Conan ahead of time. And you also don't meet Conan until you're on the show. Yeah, you talk to a producer. At least we didn't. Yeah, you talk to a producer ahead of time and they do this interview and kind of ask what's your story. And they, you know, they try to uh, understand the answers to your questions so then they can take a few of those questions and then write them on a teleprompter so that Conan can ask them in a certain order and then lead into certain clips to make an entertaining and concise piece of television. Well, and you may have noticed this before if you watch any late night television, especially when a comedian is a guest, the, the you'll be like, you know, maybe everyone is smarter than I realize and they all know that this is the way it works. So uh, forgive me if I'm insulting your intelligence by telling you this, but if you notice that when Conan or any other late night guest ask a question to a comedian, so they're like, so uh, you, um, so you've been to like the laundry lately? You've been washing your clothes? Like they'll ask him like a really yeah, leading question. I went to the laundry last week and Talk about underwear for miles. <laughs> right. And then the comedian goes into his bit just like that. It's just that, that great. Or they'll be like, That was a joke. So I heard that you got a dog because the comedian has told them ahead of time, I've got a dog. Yeah, bit. man. I got a dog. Who are you trying to be? Who are you and supposed to be? Listen, man. It opens up a whole world of <laughs> you, you stuff, like, man. You sound like Marvin Webster, the fake guest that John Boy and Billy used to have on their show. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, I'm being a fake guest. Oh, okay. Maybe that's why it is. But anyway, my dog, uh, talk about fur for miles, man. <laughs> you find I find fur in places I didn't even know there were places. You know, <laughs> shedding everywhere, man. Yeah, it's great, right? Yeah, that's, Conan. That's exactly how it works. And then Conan's like, "Yep." So it's this weird dance because it's a conversation that has been scripted, but you haven't done it together Listen. necessarily. So, well, and the thing you were saying, we didn't meet Conan before the show. We didn't meet Conan until we were on television with Conan. When he introduces us, and this part was cut out of the, the clip that's online, where we actually, we actually came out, came through the um, curtain, and then walked out and saw the people and all the lights, and it's like, <gasps> this is actually happening. Did, did you hug him? I think I tried to hug him. We shook his hand. I remember thinking, and then we sat down. I'm going to shake his hand and give him, uh, like, give him a, a handshake and a back pat because it'll look like they're homeboys. I specifically remember thinking about this. You're going to give him the, but a, a knuckle buster. I, I was also thinking at the same time about many of you may or may know this that I just herniated a disc right before that, like three days before the appearance, and I was really worried about looking like there was something wrong with me as I was walking out and sitting down. So much so that we talked like to the cyborg. producer. We talked to the producer ahead of time and said, listen, I'm in a lot of pain, and it may be obvious that something's wrong to the point that we may have to address it. But once, once we got out there, all adrenaline. I didn't feel any pain. Now, after the thing was over, I was in a lot of pain. But, but during, we, couldn't feel it. And that was meeting Conan. So you're not just thinking, oh, I'm on television, this is really happening, but you're actually meeting the person for the first time when you shake his hand on television, which I didn't, I thought I would meet him beforehand, but that doesn't happen. And then he cuts to a commercial break, and so during the commercial break, we are having your first off-camera conversation with Conan O'Brien. And a lot of people think he, he says things to you, but really what happens is when the, the lights go down, he, he looks at you and he's like, daba 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 blah 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 He just makes noises. He's not actually speaking. He's and like, I'm like, are blah, we, are we blah, supposed blah, to blah, respond blah, 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 in blah, blah, kind? So I was like, dibi 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 daba dibi daba yeah. dibi. People think that he's actually saying things. And the newscasters do the same thing. As soon as the broadcast is over and they turn to each other, they're just going blah 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 blah. And if you look at their mouths, you can see that they're not making real words. Yeah, that's an interesting thing I learned about the whole thing. Exactly. So anyway, uh, we had a great conversation with Glozell. She is a great, great person that we really didn't meet until. Um, this the podcast we had met in very quickly in passing. We talk about that, but we heard her story about how she got kicked out of Jay Leno. We're gonna hear a little excerpt from that right now. So I'm like, I'll just go to the Tonight Show, and I'll probably start working there at the Tonight Show. Right? He's gonna love that. Well, it didn't turn out like that. I end up going to 200 shows. You said 200. I've, I went to, no, I went to over 600 shows oh, over what? two years. Yes, I've gone. Yes, and your plan. 
My, so, well, no. so what was your plan? The Tonight Show. You're going to the t- t- Tonight Show taping tonight show, yes. 600 times in two years. Yes. And how do you, it's how documented. Do you even, how do you do this? Well, what had happened was. Why do you do this? So I was like, why don't you go to the Tonight Show? Maybe you'll get an idea. And so I had VIP tickets. So I didn't have to wait in line. And I would just go. And I'm like, oh, maybe I'll get some ideas. And it was just nice watching the show. This is a classic show that I used to watch. I love The Tonight Show. And when I was growing up, it is not that way now. But when I was growing up, if you are a comic and you made, you got on The Tonight Show, whether you got the thumbs up to come sit down with Johnny Carson or not. The comics would come out. They would yes, do their stand-up. Yes. And they would look over at yes, Johnny. That was their and, life. Do you understand? If, yeah. Mm-hmm. And if Johnny... Johnny was the gave man. Gave him the thumbs up. It would change their life. How, how do you how do you go every day? It, I mean, because that seems like a difficult thing to do. There's mm. people who travel here and like mm. I want to no, go to I, the Tonight no, Show. No, I was living here and I, I knew someone that worked at NBC, not at the Tonight Show NBC. And they get on the VIP list. You just get on the list. You show up. You go to the show. It's free to go. Right. And it's they don't tape at eleven. They tape at four. So you're done with whatever you're doing, and you can go watch the show. It's only it's exactly an hour. That's it. It didn't take much time out of uh-huh. your life. Right. Okay. So, and you got the VIP ticket every so day. Just, and you yeah, went and, for seven months I had a VIP ticket, not realizing that the Tonight Show people are like, "Well, who is this?" Okay, click through to SoundCloud or iTunes. On SoundCloud, you can comment at the particular place that relates to whatever you're commenting on, and we read all the comments on SoundCloud or when you decide to tweet and share ear biscuits. Hashtag ear biscuits, and um, tweet at Glozell. Uh, let her know how much you enjoyed the conversation after you go and. Listen to the conversation. Tweet at her and say, thanks for being a... Well, say whatever you want to. Just hashtag it with Ear Biscuits so she knows what you're talking about. That'll be helpful for all of us. Enjoy.